What's going on, guys and girls? Coach Luca here from Vigor Ground Fitness and Performance with D. Hey guys. Right? I just announce everybody like I call them on a, on a day-to-day basis. So check this out. So today we're going to cover um, a couple of lifts that we do at Vigor a lot. All right? We do them for multiple reasons. My favorite, it builds the butt. All right? But it's also, very, if done right, it can um, like basically improve injury. Oh, uh, shit, I want to say improve injury, improve injury prevention, right? Uh, I don't want to say get rid of low back pain, but it, it does, put it this way, most people do not have a strong butt, right? But in, in building that helps alleviate back pain. Most people are on extension, so it's one of the things that alleviates back pain. But it also improves performance, all right? Those two lifts are the glute bridge, right, and barbell glute bridge, and uh, the elevated hip thrust, right? So the reason why I'm shooting the video is because we do it a lot here, and then we also do online programming uh, with folks, and then a lot of people that go to other gyms and things of that nature and do this exercise, people say, what the hell is that, right? It looks weird, so on and so forth. And um, I've gone to a lot of gyms, and like people just are not doing it right. And, and essentially what it's doing, it's kind of like, once again, uh, driving this bad pattern and you're, wor you're not working the right muscles and you're probably enhancing bad things versus working the good ones. All right, so what we're going to do today, we're going to go over those two drills, go over a couple of variations um, and coach like what are the things that usually tend to go wrong or I should say the, the, the things that kind of make the, the exercise break down uh, and we're going to coach them and cue them so you can see how it's done right. Uh, I am going to cover a whole, like since we're talking about the butt, I'm going to do a whole video on a bunch of exercise variations, programming, all those different things uh, in the near future, right, and write a, a blog post about it. But today we want to cover this because it's that important. So these are going to start down on the ground, and actually we're going, to, we're going to roll away the barbell for a little bit just so we can show, let's do like the regular glute bridge, thing, right? And, and let's go at an angle uh, to the camera. So... Yeah, no, uh, so you're going to be on the floor, right? So you guys know I'm kind of like coaching this as we go along so you guys can see it. So the regular glute bridge is these just going to do a, a couple reps, right? This is where everybody knows the glute bridge to be. It's like, oh, okay, it's pretty simple, right? Now, before we add the barbell to it, because this is important, right, right off the bat, what we're going to do, right, when we start, I want D to contract, get the anterior core engaged, right? So... There you go. You can see how her rib cage kind of locked down here versus being like do be an extension. So you'll see a lot of people start with this curve. They're already like tight in their hip flexors. They got a big curve. So when they drive up, drive up now. Now she's actually working her low back more than she's working her butt. Right. So when we start, we're actually going to get that anterior core engaged. I like people to drive their hands into the ground, get those lats engaged. So now look at that position shoulder and hip are in the same position, right? So it's a straight line, okay? Okay, so that's one of the things that we look for right from the get-go. Now, turn uh, this way, be towards the camera, and you'll see even with body weight, even with body weight, you'll see this, although with, when we, once we weight it, it's going to get more pronounced, is when people come up into a bridge, they'll kind of collapse, right? So you see she's not sturdy here. Her knees are falling in where what we coach is to dial the floor. So imagine your feet are grabbing the floor and you're like turning a dial, right? So you're, they're not actually going to move, but what that's going to do is activate these external rotators and she's going to get all that glute firing, right? It's also going to keep her rib cage down. One way to obviously, some people will not have a good idea of what that means. We're going to start pushing their knees in and they're going to come up and try to push them out. So when she goes down, do a couple reps. Right, rib cage is down. I'm going to drive them in, push them out, okay? So that's a great way. Another way that we could do it, we're not going to actually put the band around it, but the band would go up around the knees here. So we'll be pulling her knees in. She'd be pulling them out, pulling them out and getting more activation, All right? So those are like two very, very common things that we need to look at. And like I said, just saying dialing the floor or getting somebody to, like I said, squeeze those knees will get more activation. Now, number three... Something that you'll see, you don't really get people to talk about it much, is where the feet are placed in that glute bridge position. So you'll see people coming out pretty damn far out. So like even right here. So now 
when D goes into that glute bridge, right, it's going to be a lot more hamstring, right? And some people that have already have a tough time with activating their glutes, you'll see doing glute bridges, single leg glute bridges, and saying my hamstrings are cramping up. You know, part of that is because they're overactive and short and a lot of different reasons. But, you know, we want to bring that foot kind of six inches from the butt really quite close. So now when, when D pushes, pushes up, right, we get it up here. Now, when it's just a glute bridge with body weight, what I also like to do to get those glutes engaged is push into the hips so that they understand where they're driving from. So ribcage goes down, now they actually know how it should feel, right? So they get some tension, okay? Because for a lot of people, the glute bridge, just the regular glute bridge is going to be 10, 15 reps, doing it the right way, torquing the floor, dialing the floor, keeping that ribcage down is going to really start activating glutes. They're going to feel stuff that they haven't felt in a long time, right? But then we can go to a single leg variation, and um, I like to get that, that, let's get this uh, knee up and do a single leg uh, bridge, right? Get that foot dorsiflexed. So I like to get that knee past um, 90 degrees flexion, so we take that low back out of it as much as possible, right? Same thing, right? This becomes a lot more difficult. But once again, keeping that rib cage down, especially on the left side, right? Same thing. Drive through the heel, torquing the floor a little bit, right? You can get a little bit of contact in here, just a little bit, and it's much, much better, okay? So that's your back extension, like I said, with body weight. We can add, you know, sand bells, all types of different stuff. I love it banded, so you can band into the, into the, uh, into the squat rack, and then use the, the band would be pinned to the ground, and D would pop through. Uh, those are awesome. But what we're going to do is, like, once we really want to get some, you know, build some, I would say, strength and also hypertrophy, so build some mass in the booty, which I know a lot of you want to do, right, we're going to start adding weight. Now, we're going to go pretty, uh, I'd say, this is, this is decently light. I mean, you can really start loading this stuff up. Now, a couple of things that, um, you know, make sure that you have a pad. Uh, you probably won't have a thicker pad. We'll do a pad and some mats on it if necessary, uh, because if you don't have a pad, like I said, the barbell can get a little bit, uh, I would say, uncomfortable on the hips, All right? But if we got the pad, you're good, okay? So now in this position, D's going to slide back, get under the bar, right? Being, find that comfortable spot on those hip bones, and then find the same position as we had with body weight, right? She's going to keep her hands on the, on, on the barbell, and kind of pull it down, try to break it, right? Because when she tries to break it, she's going to activate her lats and her abs are going to get tighter. We're going to get that anterior core engaged, right? See how she's got it down now? And now we're going to drive those heels through the ground, tall, 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 tall. I always say push through the ceiling, right? Push those hips to the ceiling. Now another thing you can see is she's hissing out, right? So, so she's creating intra-abdominal pressure so drive up and hold it up there for three seconds. Three, two, one, and back down. All right? Do it again one more time. And back down. All right? So when she hisses out, once she has her rib cage down, when she hisses out, she keeps that rib cage down, creates intra-abdominal pressure so she doesn't slip into extension. All right? Because now my low back's working, my neck is in a bad position, and her butt's not getting to work the way it's supposed to. All right? So... You can see, now we didn't turn to the side because the same things that we talked about in body weight would happen here, right? Her knee's collapsing, we do the same thing. We'd either push them out, start coaching them on, on, on dialing the floor out, and she'd feel a lot more But keeping that, she, and the thing is when you're keeping that ribcage down, you're feeling your abs work too, right? So obviously from here, we could load it up with more weight. We could do single leg, uh, we could do single leg with this. Now, Here's one quick thing that I want to throw in there. For a lot of people that don't have, because once you go single leg weighted, right? Once we go single leg weighted on, uh, I would say glute bridges, weighted glute bridges, many times people cannot maintain stability of their core, so they'll rotate, right? Which creates, I would say, tension on the low back and a lot of other things. So one way to kind of go about this to alleviate it but still get that single leg work is to get a, a, a kind of like a either low box squat or steps and put this foot up on here. So we're going to put this foot up on here, just extend it completely, bam. Right, so 
Now, what that's going to do is going to prevent that rotation, right, as much. And D's going to go single leg, right, and drive up. And now you can see she doesn't have an issue. She's driving through this leg mostly. So she's not really doing much with that left leg up on the bench, right, but she's driving through. I go push that through the ceiling. Push it through the ceiling. There we go. Nice. One more. And break. All right, so what, what we just did, right, you didn't feel anything in your low back or anything like that, right? Right, so what ends up happening, like I said, if, if that was not there, the weight is big, and a lot of people just don't have that strength, rotational stability yet, right? So they start going like this. Now, one side of the back starts getting stressed out and so on and so forth. This allows us to progress to a single leg without her having to, uh, like I said, with, with her leg getting as much work and her butt getting as much work as it needs, without compensation, right? So those are just a couple of variations we could do. We could add the band to the barbell, and like I said, there's, there's many, many different we can, things we can progress with, how long we pause at the top. I really like a, for 1,001 or 1,001 to 1,002 pause at the top, so they get that feeling and then control, right? Uh, also slow negatives, things of that nature, all right? All right, slide out for a second, D. We're gonna, we're gonna get you up on the elevated hip thrust. All right, so, you know, one of the, like I said, a great thing for performance is, remember, when we do deadlifts, right, this is a vertical pull, right? It's vertical. Whereas when we're doing hip thrusts, it's a horizontal, right? So it builds a different uh, force vector, which is very important in sports, right? And like, both are important. So doing a deadlift is very important, but we tend to just completely not use these horizontal, uh, I would say, positions for hip extension, right? So, but if you think about sport, right, where do we sprint? How do we jump? Which way do we go? It's not always up. It's usually a different vector. So this is very helpful in performance. It's very helpful in building, like I said, strength and muscle mass, um, like I said, from different positions. And like I said, our hamstrings and glutes and things like that, they function differently, right? When we sprint, sometimes it's bent, sometimes it's extended and, 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 and things of that nature. So, that's why we have to incorporate this drill. And like I said, because most people live in extension, they don't have their glutes built up. When we get glute strength, we get that rib cage down. Even just standing around becomes much better because we don't have these bad postures, right? So it has so many benefits that, it, you know, it, it's, it would be crazy not to implement this into your programs. One, uh, number two, I like big butts, I can't deny. So and this is a great you know, drill to, to start building that, right? So number two, this is just a little bit of a different variation. As you can see in the back extension, you know, D was on the ground, and when she pushed through, like the vector was, like there, just, there was a shorter range of motion, and also um, where she, the, the direction she was pushing the weight in was a little bit different than what we're gonna do now. We're gonna do a couple of body weight, and then we're gonna add the bar to it. So you see it, this is an elevated barbell hip thrust, um, we'll usually start, like I said, you can see that her mid-back is right on that edge. You don't want to go too far up, right? But you, yeah, you don't want to be like too far up where you're kind of already in your low back and then it's breaking you, right? You got to kind of have some room to move. And um, also you don't want to be too low, right? You don't want to be right on top of that neck right there. So you're going to be like right there in the middle of the mid-back, just a little bit further up right there. Good. Right, now, so now you can see when she goes down, she's still going to keep that rib cage connected to the hips. So when she goes down, her whole trunk goes down, and then she's going to drive up and squeeze. Right, so you can see that range of motion is like almost double as it is from the ground, uh, from the, from the um, I say, glute bridge, right? So once again, connected and popping through. Now, here's what you're going to see a lot of, right? Even at the beginning, you're going to see this. Right? You're going to see the rib cage flaring up, and when they go down, start going down, you can see how the hips drop and the rib cage stays up and then comes back up. What that's going to do is going to work the low back a lot. All right? So keeping those connected is very important. So when D goes up and down, the way I like to coach it is, like I said, hip shoulders move at the same time. They stay connected, go down, come up, and at the top we're going to squeeze and get the belly button to the ceiling. So almost posteriorly tilt. Right, so that extra activation, right? Now we're gonna do the same cues. She's gonna dial the floor with her feet. I'm still gonna push in, right? Except here, like I said, it's tougher to get activation. Sometimes you can grab, 
grab the bench and create some tension there through lats. But like I said, you want to move down, neck, shoulders, hips, drive up, and get nice and tall. And when you do that, it's harder, like I said, than driving into extension, but you're not really activating the right muscles when you're, when you're like I said, driving into extension and not keeping the hips and shoulders connected. So we're going to add the barbell now. A couple of things. With certain people, if they uh, have a tough time getting from the floor, we would raise this up on some plates, right? So it might start here and be easier for the client to, uh, to get from the ground up, right? But these done this a lot of times before, so it's not going to be a big problem. So she's going to set it up, right? Going to take a big breath, rip cage down, and she drives up, right? So now you're going to see how she's going to move shoulders and hips together and driving into nice. All right, so she's got a long neck. You can see that rib cage connected. Let's do two more reps. Always hissing out so she keeps that pressure and intra-abdominal pressure with the hips uh, with the rib cage down. And break. Okay. One more thing that will uh, and you can roll this off a little bit. One thing also that I didn't mention. Let's just go back into that position. You're just going to do it with body weight. That we'll see is the knees really sliding forward here. So Basically, when, when people drive up, instead of driving straight up, they'll drive forward, right? So what I like to do here is kind of block and allow them to drive straight up to the ceiling and even guide sometimes, right? So if I block the knee, they have to go straight up, right? So they're driving at extension. And you'll see that pattern when somebody wants to, like, work with the quads more. They'll drive forward and then up, right? And you'll, you'll see sometimes, like I said, Get that foot back a little bit, both of them. You'll see this position, right? You'll see the knees forward, whereas we want to have that straight line, vertical shin, because then I know they're driving straight up into the air, All right? Thanks, D. Yep. All right, so there's a lot of different variations, uh, I'm sorry, that we could do. We could do a single leg variation on, on, the, uh, on the hip thrust as well with the knee up, marching, Right? There's tons of different stuff that we can do here, but the main thing is to see the things that can go wrong and that kind of take the exercise away from, from what it's meant to be and work the things that it's meant to work. Okay? But these two exercises are awesome. Right? So if you're doing lower body day, throwing this in, like I said, as a supplement or assistance exercise to some lifts is great. You know, we'll talk some other time about the different rep ranges, but I love a like, heavy, medium, kind of uh, lighter day. So also rep range is lower with heavier loads, medium. So lower, think anything one to six, right? Medium rep ranges, you're looking at something, somewhere six to 12 or eight to 12. And then 15 to, 15 to 30 reps is the high rep range, which I love with body weight and, and bands, right? So the one to six, you're going to load it heavy, right? The eight to 12, I like to have it more controlled and pauses at the top, 1,001, 1,002. Whereas with uh, band work and body weight, you know, 15 to 30 reps, is, uh, is obviously more of a pump, okay? And like I said, we could dig into the, way deeper into the program design and the rep ranges, but just so you get a bit of an idea of certain things, some, some of the things that we do here. But use these exercises, you know, go over the coaching cues and start, like I said, implement them, put them in your next program, watch how much better you feel, one, if you do it right, strength levels are gonna go up, your booty's gonna get bigger, nice and toned, and you're gonna get that shelf, right? <laughs> so. Just plug it into your program. It really is an awesome exercise. Both of them are. And um, we'll, see, we'll, we'll, we'll be back here with more tips and tricks and, and coaching cues from Vigoran Fitness and Performance.